In this video, we're going to do a render comparison using the classroom scene between Optics, Odin, and Turbo Render. And then in the second half of the video, you're definitely going to want to stick around for this because the features I'm going to show you are so incredible that YouTube has insisted I put out a public health warning regarding involuntary spontaneous ejaculation. So stick around for that. <laughs> So the, the first thing is we'll open up the classroom scene and I'll duplicate the main scene. I'll show you why later. So in main scene 001 now, I need to turn on the compositor because when you get turbo render, you're not only getting an incredibly fast rendering solution, you're actually getting a full rendering pipeline. And we'll look at some of that a little bit later. And I'm going to get rid of all the passes we don't need. So let's just keep the combined pass, turn all these ones off. And in the compositor, because we're not using all those passes anymore, we can delete the majority of this uh, compositor tree and it'll leave us just with this one render layers node. We'll get rid of the switch node as well. Let's hook that up. All right, so let's have a look then. We'll start off with turbo render. We'll make sure it's in GPU mode. Let's enable this. And I'm going to use fast mode and I'm going to use very dirty because I'm going to do it at low samples for the video. And the new option, prevent fireflies, I'm going to turn that on. Not particularly necessary with this scene, but I'll leave it on anyway because it will uh, it will make a slight difference. It basically gets rid of bright white dots and it will also speed up rendering a little bit as well. So I've got some new modes now, some uh, automatic render settings. So that's, this is to save people having to mess about going through the render settings and having a trial and error to try and find a result that they want. All you've got to do now is just choose the quality you're after. I'll go with high and also enhanced textures and these settings I need transmission because there is glass in the scene. So that's all set up now. What I'm going to do is render. We'll do a still image. All right, so that took one minute, 12 seconds. What I'm going to try and do is do it with optics and Odin and keep it for the same time, the complete time, including the denoising process, uh, just to make it fair. So let's get rid of turbo options and um, we're going to turn on the denoiser and let's just name this turbo render high. Next one is going to be Odin and obviously this doesn't come with any pre-built in settings. So I'm going to set this up to be just the same time. So this one I think was one minute 12. So I know that generally the open image denoiser takes around about five seconds to process. So I'm going to put this at a limit of 107. And we'll just turn up the sample something high. So 67 seconds, 1.1 minutes. And let's render this one. Okay, so that's 112. Uh, and turbo render was 112 as well. Good guess. All right, so next we'll do optics. And this one's even faster to process. So this normally takes about two to three seconds. So I'm going to put this at um, 70 seconds. Should be about right. And we'll make sure we change it to optics here. And then we'll render again. All right, and that's finished in one minute and 11. So about the same. Now, just before we do the comparison, check this out. Let's say, for example, I put down a very expensive node, such as lens distortion, and I turn this quite high. Now, you notice this is taking probably, let's just expand this. That took around about three seconds to, in fact, it's still going, probably about five seconds to uh, calculate. Now, if I then want to make changes to this, do further color correction things. Then every time I move something, every time I move this knob on here, for example, I've got a huge weight, which is incredibly frustrating. So one of the tools that Turbo Tools comes with is the ability to cache nodes. So if I just cache this one, let's set it to 100% um, resolution. So that's the percentage of the final render. I'll click on this node and I'll just click cache. So what's going to happen now is, it's going to cache it so that I can now make immediate changes. There's no waiting anymore. Even if I've got a massive com uh, compositor tree down here, no matter how complex it is, we can cache it up and we get immediate response again. So back to the comparison, let's start with turbo render. So straight away, hopefully you can see on the video, you can see there is a difference. So optics, Odin, and then turbo render, you might notice there's a lot more detail. 
let me just come in on, for example, on this blackboard. This blackboard's got an incredibly fine texture, and preserving this will help to, um, you know, create a, a more realistic render. If you look at Odin, look at that. So this, this is Turbo Render, and this is Odin. Completely gone. All that detail's vanished, and Optics, again, is completely gone. Now let's come across this wall. The wall here, this is Optics. This is Odin. Odin's done a much better job. And Turbo Render, even better, because we've turned on the Enhanced Textures option. And let's look at the bag. So this bag is quite a long way away, and it's got very fine detail on there. So Odin... It's just, it's just a complete blurry mess. We've lost all that detail. And Optics has actually done a little bit better than Odin on the bag, but not on the wall for some reason. Not sure why. Okay. Let's look at what else we can uh, compare. So it's just much crisper generally. We've got a lot more detail preserved. And now let's come across and look at some geometry. So look at this door frame. It's very crisp. We can see all the detail on the textures and also on the geometry. Now let's go to Odin. Look at that. We've lost it all. It's just, it's blurred everything together. Uh, even the textures on the door. So this is Turbo and this is Odin. A massive difference. And Optics, again, it's completely blurred it out. Maybe even a little bit worse than uh, Odin, particularly in this, this area just here. Optics, Odin, Turbo Render. So a huge improvement there. And maybe some difficult areas like the bin here. So this is Turbo Render. Odin, it's just a blurry mess. We've lost all this really fine detail on that mesh bin. So again, Turbo Render. And then Odin. Turbo Render. Look at the, the texture detail on the desk and on the chair. We've lost nothing, basically. And then Optics is similar to uh, Odin. So Turbo Render there, huge difference again. And what you might notice if you use, um, if you've got heavy depth of field, like we've got here, and we turn on the enhanced textures option here, on depth of field areas, you might get a slight bit of noise around the edges. If it's noticeable, I mean, it won't be noticeable in the higher render settings, above high, so you've got ultra and insane, it's not going to matter on those. But if it is on the option you choose, a lower render preset, what you can do is make sure you turn on the heavy depth of field option and that will clean that up. Anyway, so let's look again at the detail in this really distant area. Let's bring it up to full screen again. So we've got the floorboards in the background there. And this is quite a long way away now and it's very, it's very noisy texture and it's in the shadow. So it's a very difficult area for the denoiser to clean. Let's look at Odin. Look at this. It's gone. We've lost everything. We've lost all the... You can't even tell there's different floorboards there anymore. Even quite close up. Look at the quality of this floorboard here. Go back to Turbo Render. Look at that. Absolutely no detail loss whatsoever. That's incredible quality. And Odin, look at this. You can't even see any grain there compared to Turbo Render. It's just completely detailed. Odin, Optics, Turbo Render. So there's the comparison. I think the, the difference in quality is uh, incredibly easy to see. And by the way, my graphics card is a potato. So if you've got anything better than my graphics card, which is a GTX 1070, for example, even a 3070 is nearly seven times faster, according to the uh, Blender benchmark page. So it's most likely if you were to use the same high preset that I've used here, you're going to be getting a much faster render as well. So what we're going to look at now is something even more amazing. And this is what I believe that Turbo Render is the only system which is able to do this in Blender. And possibly in any software. So to test this out, we're going to go back to the main scene. So this is the original scene. And in this one, we've still got this compositor. And we've got all the passes enabled. Let's just go into the passes section. You can see we've got all these passes enabled. Now we just need to turn the compositor on. Post-processing. Compositor. Right. 
Now I'm going to do a comparison between turbo render Odin and optics in this scene. So let's go with, and you're going to want to stick around for this because this is going to be mind blowing. Turbo render, we'll call this the party trick or one of the party tricks because the features are actually going to get better and better until the end of the video. We'll turn turbo render back on. I'll make sure it's in GPU mode. And this time I'm actually going to do it in slow mode. And it's not actually that slow. Um, very dirty. We'll check that. We'll leave prevent fireflies on and we'll go with the same setting. We'll go with high. Make sure we turn transmission on because we've got that glass up there. We'll leave heavy depth of field off. We, you can notice we've lost the other options here, the enhance. This mode is automatically enhanced. All right, so let's render this. Okay, so this finished in around about 1 minute 29, which is pretty good because this scene is actually rendering three different scenes. It's the cycles and then two EV scenes as well. So that's pretty quick. And now we'll do the same for Odin. And now optics. So let's come across here and we'll do a comparison. So this should be incredibly easy to tell the difference. This is optics. You might notice a slight bit of noise there. This is Odin. Again, just in case you can't tell, there it is. And Turbo Render. So Turbo Render is the only add-on available, denoising add-on available for Blender, to the best of my knowledge at least, that is able to do this. It's able to multipass denoise and still work with existing compositor node trees, no matter how complicated they are, or even if you've got multiple scenes in there. For example, this one is rendering three different scenes, and each one of them can have their own unique turbo render settings, so that you can, for example, render one with no denoising, one with high quality, one with low quality, etc. So you can immediately start working with no messing about. Again, because it's part of Turbo Tools, we can drop down another cache node and then immediately start working with no delay, even with this huge compositor tree that's downstream. And now I'm going to show you something even better. Now this is the bit that we've been waiting for, the grand finale. And this, uh, I believe, is going to blow your mind and it's going to put Blender's compositor into an entirely different league. So let's make a second cache node and this time we'll set it to be 30% of the render resolution. So I'm going to put in a reroute node and I'm going to cache this one at 30%. Now I'm going to render an animation and then I'll come back when it's finished and I'm going to show you something insane. Okay then, so that's finished rendering. Let's see what happens directly after rendering if I press play. You can see we've actually got playback in the compositor. And it might be a little bit slow, and if it is, then what you can do is, in the performance options, just turn on frame dropping, and it will go full speed. So that was practically full speed already, because it's such a low quality, uh, such a small file. But if I was to plug in this 1080p one, so let me just pause that, I'm going to plug this one in, and turn the backdrop size down a bit, press play. You can see that is still maintaining the speed, but if I turn frame dropping back to play every frame, you can see that's going a little bit slower. So put it back to frame, drop in, and now it's going full speed, whatever we set over here in the output properties. So this is 25 frames per second. So that seems, that's pretty good. Now, what if I set this to 240 frames? No problem. 1080p, full size, is playing back in Blender's compositor at 240 frames per second. So let's drop it back to 25 and we can now start compositing. We'll drop this in and in real time, we can actually composite. And maintain the frames per second. Even if I change this back up again, 120 frames per second. No problem. Real time compositing. Now then, let's put it back to 25. From this point on, we can actually, because it's a, full, it's a full rendering pipeline, we can now publish this. So before we publish, we'll just make sure we choose somewhere to save it to. Importantly, we need to change the file format. The fastest one to publish is going to be the video format. And if I now choose to publish the animation, what will happen is, 
it will unhook. So let me just do it. Publish animation. It's going to discard the cache and it's going to recalculate the entire node tree. And that's quite slow. So this is why I saved out 100% cache as well. We've got the quick publish option. And what this does, it will discard everything that's below or that's downstream of, the, of a cache node. So quick publish is turned on. And now if we publish the animation, look at that, blisters through. And then when it's finished, we can choose view published animation and it's going to bring it up and then we can look at what we've done. And one last party trick, because it's been a long time request for users to be able to not lose the render data when they close Blender. They'd like it to be saved with Blender so that they can come back to compositing straight away. Now check this out. We don't even have to save it. It actually comes with a full render management system. So it'll manage all of your render files. So let's go to open the classroom untouched. In fact, let's go open. We won't save it. And then we'll go to load UI. And we're going to classroom untouched. So this is the original one that, that has never been used. Open this. And you can see we've got the composite back with no trace whatsoever of anything that's been done by Turbo Tools. All I've got to do is hit refresh all. Now we need to turn the compositor on first and refresh all. And it's going to use the management system to find all the cache that matches this scene, regardless of the file name, but this scene, this, this camera and the view layer. And not only for the current scene, for any scene that is within the blend file. So you can see we've got three scenes, dust volume and main scene. And it's going to bring in the render for each one of those for each frame as well. So at the moment, you'll notice that the standard cache is missing. It's only brought back in the render cache, which means playback is going to be terrible. But luckily, it's not a problem. All we need to do is add the cache again. And because that, all those cache files are still on disk, we can play it back straight away. And what this also means is if you've got more than one machine, you can actually be rendering on one machine and start compositing on a different machine while it's still rendering. All you need to do is point both machines at the same cache folder. And that's it. So if you'd like to find out more about Turbo Tools and also get some of the free scene files to test it on, you can visit 3d-illusions.co.uk. Oh, and if you've got any suggestions, uh, let me know in the comments below or at the support email if you've already got a copy. And that's it. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. And if you'd like to learn about geometry nodes, then you're in luck because if you visit 3d-illusions.co.uk, there's a 147 minute tutorial together with scene file that you can see playing here, which incidentally is playing in real time in the EV viewport. This is not cycles, which would teach you everything you need to know about the underlying fundamentals of geometry nodes, allowing you to build anything you want by creating your own blender modifiers. It's great fun, it's really easy to follow, and I'm sure it'll be incredibly useful. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.